Isabella Wijnberg. For my final step I took two and a half years ago. My name is Manon. I did my um, definitive commitment in December 2022. My name is Armel. I did my final commitment in, uh, on the 14th of August 2012. My name is Marie. Uh, it's in 2021. I am definitely engaged in the celibacy uh, for Kingdom of God in Emmanuel community. I'm a lawyer specialized in class actions. I'm an occupational therapist. I'm a high school teacher. Uh, I work as a doctor in a hospital. Providence. So I studied law and I had to do an internship and it was at a big law firm and I really loved it. It went fast, it is challenging, intellectually challenging, but also on a human point of view. Uh, it's the fact to be with people, to help them, be with the patient, with the person who needs my help. It's a very individual work. First of all, I loved literature and I loved the context of, the, of schooling. Um, but also I love the idea of transmitting uh, things and to help uh, teenagers grow and learn things by themselves. I like uh, to work with all people, with my patients and also with my colleagues and with the nurses to be together uh, and to work in a team. I like also to have the contact with all the patients, to ask them what they are living and to try to help them uh, in their uh, problems and illness. Yes, my colleagues know that I'm a sister. When we spend time together in the break, there are questions and we talk about our private life. Yes, they know. I always wear the wooden cross and the tenue, the normal uh, outfit of the sisters, even at work. I've had um, years when wearing the cross was a kind of obstacle. Uh, but not where I'm, I'm working at the moment. It's not at all a problem. It's a little bit surprising because I am only one there <laughs> living like this. No, I thought it would be, but it's not actually. They like it. Sometimes they have some question about my life, about my vocation as a consecrated sister and uh, these are a good uh, occasion to speak about what I am living and why I am decided to live as a consecrated sister. Yeah, I've had to answer questions or to, to, uh, to explain things about the church or about the Bible, depending on what we're working on, what we're studying. Uh, I believe that I can witness the goodness of God and His love by my uh, attitude to the people I am caring on. The balance. So, finding I've got a challenging job and then balancing that with all the other things that I like to do and to really have enough prayer time and to really be rooted in God in everything that I do. Yeah, this desire to give myself and uh, to give myself in work and in the mission and uh, to find also some free time uh, to see my family, to meet my friends. To make sure uh, the prior life has the first uh, place in, in my daily life, not simply in my life in general, but every day. But it's a challenge and it's also the joy. I am very touched by the vocation to live in the world and not to be from the world. And I think it's also the biggest challenge to live this contem contemplative life, this prayer life and this union with God and to be fully in the world and to have uh, equilibrium in these two things. Uh, it's a big challenge, I think, for all the life, but it's a beautiful journey and I like to, to uh, try to find this journey. Where to start? A <laughs> lot of joys. The joy in my consecrated life is to know that Jesus called me to be at his side and to spend time with him. 
uh, to know that he loves me and even though that I'm weak, um, he, he called me to give myself um, as, I, as good as I can. One of the joys is um, just belonging to God, just being and belonging to God. Um, and wherever I come, people in a certain way see God a little bit. So I can carry his cross, I can carry him into the world. Prayer. <laughs> prayer, consecrated life is prayer and, and, and it helps you to really be rooted in God. Praise helps me uh, to keep my eyes, to look to the Lord, to be thankful for all the good he gives me. And more on a practical point of view. So for example, I've got every six, six weeks, I take one weekend of silence to really uh, yeah, to connect again and, and to, to open, open gates for God. Um, it is a joy to have brothers and sisters, to have the different states of life. And it encourages me a lot to see how um, married people, how mothers and fathers give themselves in their daily life. I'm very happy to have my brothers and sisters. I think it's living with other sisters. So not living on my own helps me to be faithful to to uh, to the Lord's call and to be on mission with all the brothers and sisters of the Emmanuel community. It's joy, it's fun, it's you know each other's lives, you pray together, you cry together, you laugh together. We don't choose whom we are going to live with, so it's a challenge, but it's a support because we, we really, really help it, uh, one another we, we can encourage each other to, to go on. We can help us uh, yeah, to carry um, difficult things in our life and to share the choice. Trust the Lord, He will never deceive you. Trust Him that He, he, he will lead you to the place that is good for you and that is good for the people around you too. It's not just you, it's also the people around you. And the, the Lord knows you and He knows them. On, on trying it, on starting this way, I think you will discover the most easily uh, if it's the right way or not. And the, the second thing is that when you already talk about it to somebody, not to many people, but to somebody. God is creative. Don't be afraid and just take it step by step. <laughs>